G'day folks. Well this is a Panasonic split system air conditioner I found at the local junkyard. Um, this is going to be a video on setting it up and testing it. Although this is not going to be a video on how to do a DIY a split system install. You are supposed to do them in accordance with local electrical and refrigerant laws. Some of them like this one would have had a plug to plug into the wall on them. This is probably as bad as big as you would want to plug into the wall. Others have to be hardwired. Um, same with the refrigerant lines. Always get a qualified professional to do it. Hmm. That little bug ain't going home to his mama. Oh. Well. Yeah, get a qualified professional to install these things, but there's no harm in mounting the indoor and outdoor units in their appropriate places. Australian law requires that a uh, certified technician do the refrigerant and electrical work. I'm just going to set this up as a uh, test demo in the shop. I just want to make sure this thing works. The only reason I brought it home and, and thought that it might work is because the valves were taped shut. Well, it had duct tape wrapped around them. That's a bit odd for a unit that might be sold as scrap metal. Normally they're left open or just not taped at all. Uh, since they were taped, I assume that somebody wanted to keep it and use it at one stage, but probably got sick of looking at it and just threw it out. So I'm guessing this whole thing works. But I don't have an infrared remote control for this indoor unit. So it'll just run on manual mode, which is that one there or that one there. I think it's cooling there. little ice uh, or snow particle symbol. Plus main power switch. It's good when they do that. Some air conditioners don't have any kind of manual controls at all and once you lose the remote, that's the end of them. You can't use them until you get another remote or replace the system. So, I'm going to clean this thing up a little bit, plumb it in. I'm not going to show how to plumb it in because I'd rather people rely on qualified technicians to do it. I've received professional training from a number of technicians on how to do this. Uh, yeah. Let's see if it works. Alright, the lines and everything are done. I've got the unit mounted on the test table. It's just sort of hanging there. Uh, I'm just going to finish off the electrics. Holding 20 pounds of R22 pressure. I haven't, the valves on the condensing end are still shut. I've just charged it with 20 pounds. Release, release 20 pounds from the condensing unit and then shut it. I'm just going to let it sit for a while and see if it leaks down. This is after a vacuum test. It did pass the vacuum test, but I always do a pressure test as well. Things behave differently under pressure or vacuum. The lines are all good. These are brand new line sets. Uh, the lines coming out of the unit look very good. Now it's just time to uh, replace this old PVC flex cable and put some power to it. This was the original power lead. It looks like it had a plug or something on it. Probably a big 16 amp plug. So, yeah, it's just about to rain. They said we are going to receive the arse end of that big cyclone up in Queensland. So, look forward to some rain if you're in Victoria. This unit's rated at 6.2 kilowatts cooling. So, it's a reasonable size. 15.3 uh, amps in cooling, 13.1 in heating. Power input is 2.95 kilowatts. And it uses 1.9 kilos of R22. This unit is still fully charged. I'm guessing they did put it aside because they wanted to use it. It was sealed up very well. Fully pumped down. And yeah, as long as the uh, electronics inside here are alright, it will work again. Great. Another good heavy duty split system. Alright, there's a bit of electrical work in this one. Hell of a lot of solid state electronics. Uh, it's somewhat dirty, but still should work alright for now. I'll give it a full clean once I actually give it a pass for electrical and functionality. No point cleaning it if it's dead. But if it shows promise of working and I get refrigerant through it, then I'll clean it and give it another assessment. Same with the condenser. Coils on that thing are all dirty, full of spider webs. I just want to make sure nothing's going to go pop. Or 
least make the circuit breaker go pop. So that's mains on. The main panel's already on, or the switchboard. So what was the main control? Don't know what that round symbol is, but let's try cool. Top one. Yeah, we've got a red light on. Louvers are opening. Hey, fan motor works too. <laughs> I think it thinks it's cooling. Nah. Power leads. And it's going through its little air diffusion cycle. Not a bad thing. I think the stepping motor's a bit out of whack because it was half open when I found it. I obviously turned it off whilst it was running, which is quite normal for pump down. You run it in cool mode until it pumps itself down and leave the liquid line shut. Wait until it comes down to vacuum or almost vacuum on the pressure gauge and then shut the suction line and cut the power off immediately. That's how you can pump them down. I think that's what they did with this one. But right now I think it thinks that it's going through a cooling cycle. Not a bad thing. So, let's turn that off. Yep. Close the louvers as it should. Some of them lose their home position if you manually move the louvers. It's a bit hard to actually take the front panel off without manually opening them. That's the problem. You can't get to the screws. I don't know what this button does. make the red light flash. And our fan is running again on low. It's probably right waiting for a signal to heat up. This little sensor here tells it when the coil's hot and then it goes into heat mode. Now this had a relay to it stop flashing. Oh I just gently crack the valves and let the refrigerant through gently. I've finished wiring it up. I haven't done a dry run before releasing the refrigerant. I just want to run this thing straight off. Everything seems to be right. I've got control to two core and power to the condensing unit. I'm going to run an external earth. Right now I'm just going to let this thing settle in as far as refrigerant is concerned and I'll just run an earth wire to the condenser 85 psi and climbing that's good I want roughly 105, 110 static pressure I'll know when it runs if it's a bit low but I've got access to reclaim refrigerant to top it up if I have to or better yet just spend a few dollars and use some new stuff We'll see how well it runs first though. If it runs like a bag of shit then might as well bang some reclaim in it and see how it goes. If not, well, if it's good, might as well top it up with some new stuff. The only problem with the reclaim is you can get moisture or air in it, depending what kind of unit it's come out of. It's all dependent on what you pull it out of. Yeah, service valves should always be wound all the way out and then capped off tightly. Some of the Chinese ones leak really bad. The one that I installed on the scrapyard office, uh, the Longy rebrand of a China unit, as soon as I started to wind that screw back it just started blasting refrigerant out of the screw seals. It's a horrible valve. This one's really good though. No leaks. I think that little split system needs to be topped up again because they're just full of leaks. I don't know why DeLong you put their name to such a ch piece of crap Chinese unit. It's really not a good thing to do. That's the high pressure side. These things have the expansion valve inside the condensing unit so the liquid's evaporating all the way through the line set as it goes up. Unlike an older style split system which has a TX valve or a uh, fixed orifice expansion point inside the evaporator unit. 
I got this old wrench off my great grandfather. Well, through my father. It's probably four times as old as I am. And it's been used on some of the first refrigeration equipment ever used in Australia. My family has a history of refrigeration work and this is one of the old tools they used to use. And I'll keep using it for as long as I can. Let's put some power to this thing and see what happens. And we're sitting on almost 105 psi, which is exactly what I wanted. I think she's almost fully charged, if not fully charged. Very close to it. It's pretty cold at the moment, so 103 psi is quite acceptable. Just as a standing pressure anyway. We'll find out how good it is once it's run. Alright, as they say, fire in the hole. Main power's on. Let's go. Ooh, cooling mode. Fan's running. Fan's running. Pressure's 50 over 90. And changing. Liquid coming through. High pressure's dropped a bit. It's 60, 50 over 60. Hmm. And give it some time to settle in. Not the best time to be trialling one. A lot of air coming out of the um, thing too. Oh, there we go. It's got a little solenoid valve just inside there. I could hear it dumping pressure back to the high side, or the low side, sorry. Yeah, now we drop down to 25 psi on the suction, and discharge is climbing past 60. If anything, it might be a little bit low, but these split systems are odd. And it's frosty cold already. I'll let it settle in for a while. Uh, not too bad. Pressures are 45 over 90... 96? Oh, almost, yeah. A little bit higher. 48 over 96. And remember, this is on the other side of, this line is on the other side of the expansion valve, it's on the evaporation side, so you always get funny readings. I think that's pretty good. The coils aren't icing, they're sweating very evenly, there's a lot of condensate coming off that already. This thing's in good health, it's not surging either. I reckon they pumped this thing down 100% with the intention of using it somewhere, I never got around to it. Get sub cooling coming back for the compressor. Damn, that's cold. I'm going to freeze to death if I sit here too long. One thing I notice is this solenoid valve coil is loose. I'm going to take this apart and tighten that nut up on top of the solenoid valve. I don't know why it has that, but it was dumping pressure back to the suction side on startup. It might be some kind of unloader. Yeah, sitting on 50 over 98. 98 psi on the high side, 50 on the suction side. They're odd things, split systems. The old fashioned splits like that, um, oh, what do you call it, the Lennox out there has, an, has a TXV on the indoor unit. In this case the TXV or the fixed expansion valve is on the, in, on the outside outdoor unit. Liquid line's jumping around a bit though. Surging. If anything, it's probably a little bit low. There isn't a constant stream of gas coming through the suction, through the discharge line and it's jumping around a little bit. But refrigerant can be replenished. I think it's doing pretty well considering. 
I'll get my temp probe onto it. That's uh, working pretty well. Uh, everything seems to have stabilised pretty well. Pressure is 50 over 100. Temperature of the air coming out of the uh, evaporator is 5 degrees or 5.1 ish. It's uh, bloody cold. I don't know why that liquid line dancing around like that, but remember the expansion point is inside the condensing unit. I have to measure, measure some temperatures and check the static pressure against the temperature and just work out exactly how much charge it has got. It's a good dehumidifier though, got lots of condensate coming out. It's working very well. We've got a Fahrenheit. It's 41.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty good. Oh well, I'll let this thing run and call it quits for the night for a while and we'll see what happens tomorrow. I won't leave it running all night but I'll have another play with it tomorrow when it's stabilised and the temperatures have soaked into it. It's going to be about 32, 33 degrees tomorrow. Should really set the uh, outdoor units outside. Might work a little bit better. But remember this is just a bench test and don't try this at home unless you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching.